Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to be going over the select tag. So the select tag basically lets us create drop down lists. All right, so to get started, we are going to have a value. So this value is going to be the initial option that we're going to have within our drop down list. So for example, I am just going to call this Peter. So now let's come down here. We're going to go ahead and create a form. And we don't need that. And within here, let's go ahead and create a label. Now let's go ahead and create a label. Now, if you've never seen the HTML4 prop, it's basically the HTML4 attribute equivalent because four is a reserved word in JavaScript. So we are just going to set this to options and what we want to say. And what we want to say is pick an option. All right, next we're going to have our select tag and we'll get rid of the name prop. We're not going to need it. And for the ID is going to match our HTML for. All right, so here what we could do is hard code some options. And first we're going to match the initial value. So we named it Peter and here we'll just display Peter. Okay. Let's go ahead and make a copy of this and we'll call this Bob and here we'll say Billy. We'll also have to change the value. So here we want Bob and here we want Billy. So now what we want to do is make this a controlled component or a controlled input. So how do we do that? Well, we saw with a text field input that you just add the value prop and this value prop is bounded to the state. So what I can do is let's go ahead and pull out value from state. And we'll pass this down as a prop. Now, the next thing we need to do, since this is a controlled input, is we need to pass an on change handler. So let's go ahead and do that. And we haven't created this yet, but we will. So let's come up here and go ahead and create this. So we're just going to say on change. We're going to get back the event object. And within here, what we want to do is update the state. So this on change handler is going to get invoked every time we select a different option. So what we can do is say this.setState and we want to update the value and we're just going to set that to e.target.value. So now let us, in order to better show this, let us output an h1 tag just displaying the current value state. So we'll say current choice now, and we'll just output value. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's open up the browser and you see that we get an error that says on change is not defined line 18. So we are supposed to say this dot on change. So let's go ahead and save this. And now let's bring it back up and you see our current choice now is Peter because that's what we initialized it to. And now if I change, you see our on change handler is fired off and it updates the state. All right. So now that that is out of the way, let's say that our options aren't hard coded like this. Let's say that these options dynamically change based on whatever happens to your database. For example, let's say you're getting this from a database. So to simulate that, we're going to create another property here. We'll call this options. And within here, we could pretend that this is coming from a database. So we'll say Peter, Bob and Billy. All right. So I have to come down here. Let's remove this. We don't want to hard code it anymore. We're going to output some JavaScript. So we use these curly braces or I want to use some JavaScript, not output some JavaScript. So I'm going to first let us pull out options from the state. Then from here, I can say options dot map. 
and we're going to get back a callback. And the first thing we're going to get is the value. And the second thing is the index. Okay. Now all I need to do is wrap the data within our array within JSX. So I could have an option tag here. And within value, we could get rid of that, use some curly braces to output JavaScript. So this is gonna get evaluated to the string. Next, what we could do is we could display whatever the value is. And since we're using map, we're mapping over these things, React is gonna complain that you're gonna have to pass down a key prop. So let's create a key prop and we'll pass in the index. Now, since this is a tutorial, I am using the index as a key prop, but you should be using some sort of primary key to guarantee that this is unique. All right, so now let us go ahead and save this and take a look at what we get. So we get an error, expect an assignment for function call instead of salt and expression. So line 21, and this is because I didn't return it. So let's go ahead and save that. Take a look at the browser. And there you go. All right, so now from here, let us move on to getting the current value that the user submitted. So first, we're going to have a button for submission. And we'll just name it submit me. And what we can do is come up here and for our form, we could pass an on submit prop. And we'll create a function called on submit. All right, so let's copy this. Let's paste this here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prevent the default action from occurring when you click a submit button. And we are just going to print out the current value. So this is going to be within this.state.value. All right, so I save this. Let us open up in the web page. We have Bob, Billy, Peter. Let's go ahead and hit F12. I click submit and you see that we get what the user wanted. All right, so that is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one.